guys, welcome back to Simply Living and welcome to today's episode. If you're new here, my name is Ybeth and I typically do affordable home decor and DIYs. For today's episode, I wanted to share a, a Halloween DIY prop. If you follow me on Instagram, you already know that I love Halloween and it's the one holiday where I go all out. And I've been slowly adding to uh, our collection and our pretty much our home decor. So for today's DIY, I wanted to DIY this guy so for so long. Like I've been wanting to DIY this for years. I never attempted making it because I honestly thought that it would be a challenge and it was a little bit of a challenge, but I'll share with you how it went. Okay, so here we are. I am going to try to work out here. So I got this from Pinterest, obviously. I wanted to recreate this so this is kind of like my guide I'm not gonna build it exactly how it, it is in the picture just because I kind of have to go with what works for me and based on the things that I have the reason why I went with this in the first place was because I already have most of these supplies in our garage I was debating on doing it or making it building it with PVC pipe so I do have PVC pipe I also have some one by furring strip from leftover from when I made the the video from my bedroom makeover i have a, a few pieces left which i think might be enough to build this so for the base i'm gonna go with um two by fours just because it's a little bit heavier i've seen people use two by fours and then nailing them to a platform of uh, pressed wood which you can do as well i wanted to stick with just this because this is what i had and i'm gonna go with 18 inches long so i am gonna cut I guess you can say like two pieces and then cross them um, to create the stand if that makes any sense you'll see right now in the video so this pick right here was basically our guide and we kind of mimicked almost everything that they did except the platform part as you can see they used tape to tape the body parts together which we didn't do we actually used screws just because screws are more stronger and would definitely hold it more in place especially if it was heavier but if that's all you have and all you can use go ahead you guys if it works it works so this is what I mean by crossing them so I could have definitely um, added a little bit more length to one of them and then cut them in half to I guess kind of make up um, for the missing space as you can see here one of them is longer than the other just because I'm stacking it on top of it um, if that makes any sense to you <laughs> But I would definitely go longer with the stand or the base just so that I can hold the weight. For example, mine, I was thinking that my prop was going to be 8 to 9 feet tall. And I think it's almost 10 feet tall. So I would definitely go a little longer just so that I can hold a lot more weight in it. If you're not familiar with the pocket hole kit, I definitely recommend that you try it if you don't know how to freehand it like I can't. I actually think that this is very useful and it makes it so much easier for you to create the pocket hole for the screws. Just make sure that you get a good one and make sure that you have screws that fit the bit that it comes with because I didn't have the correct size. So instead of the screw actually screwing inside the wood, it was actually just scraping the inside and it was really difficult for me to make it work and which is why I gave up and ended up waiting for my husband to help me. After we screwed in together the cross, which is the base, we ended up cutting another piece of 2x4 about 4 inches tall and then screwing it from the bottom of the base. I needed this 2x4 just because I'm going to start the leg here and I wanted the extra support. And 2x4s are a little bit heavier, so therefore a little bit stronger. So this is kind of what the base is supposed to look like. So apparently my camera card was full and I thought I was recording this whole time that we were building the skeleton part and I didn't and I apologize for that I actually only have this footage which is actually from my phone um, it's basically like the inspo picture as that I was showing you guys screwed everything together and only for the arms I used a tape to tape the PVC pipe okay so it's almost done now I have to get like the details done which I'm actually going to try to make the hands um 
do I know how I'm gonna go about this? Not really. All I know is that I'm gonna use wire. And I've, I have some pictures here in front of me that are supposed to kind of help me, I guess to kind of give me an idea of how to make these. And I'm gonna use this tape to hold it in place and then the painter's tape to kind of um, go over it to make it look like hands. Okay, so I'm gonna use just these pieces here. I don't wanna use too many, honestly, because I think that it will look creepier. So this is gonna be the left. I then decided to use foil around the wires to create the fingers, I guess, so that they wouldn't be it wouldn't be too skinny, and kind of just uh, crumble it around the wire, not too much, so that it doesn't, you know, obviously flatten it, but just to create a little bit of um, dimension on the fingers. And then I'm gonna go back in with the painter's tape and cover it. Make sure that when you're covering the fingers with the painter's tape that you don't squeeze too much because you don't want to get rid of what you created with the foil. I ended up adding a little bit of foil on top of the hands just to add a little bit more to it so they wouldn't look too skinny and this is what they look like wrapped. Here it is! Okay, I'm going to call it a sheet for some reason but it has to be a heat. Okay, so my idea was to obviously cover these with foam noodles and then we're gonna wrap it. So the feet are gonna go kind of like right here. I ended up using the same tape that I used um, earlier to tape the legs to the base. Um, I did it to everything basically. This tape holds so well you guys that they're not moving anywhere. I really don't know what I would have done without this tape because this is so tacky like this is once you stick it there it's gonna be there forever <laughs> Instead of wrapping the body with um, fabric, I decided to kind of create like an outfit or like if he was wearing pants just because I thought it would be easier for me. Um, and it kind of was really because all I'm doing is using um, fabric and gluing it around the leg to kind of look like if it was he was wearing pants, which I'll show you in a bit. So like I mentioned before, I decided to use um, the noodles that I had for my spider last year um, to kind of cover the wood part just so they wouldn't look too, you wouldn't be able to notice the stick too much. It, it's, it's not really a necessary step, but I decided to do it anyway since I did have them available. For the pant, I basically put the fabric long lengthwise and wrap it around the leg to kind of create the pant. And then I just hot glue the seams kind of or as close as possible but not too close because I don't want it to be like a skin tight pant. Kind of a little loose just so that you won't be able to see the shape like or the shape isn't too thin. Then to add a little bit of body, we added chicken wire because we already had some. Um, this was a little challenging because chicken wire is so sharp, you guys. You have to be careful. You basically just shape the chicken wire um, to your liking and, you know, obviously, so it looks a little bit more realistic.
For the upper body, I wanted to create kind of like a sweat, uh, I guess like a sweatshirt. So what I did was use a really long piece of fabric, cut a hole in the middle of where we're gonna stick the head in or have the head come out of, um, and basically just glue the sides so that it creates kind of like a sweater or a shirt. As we were figuring it out, we realized that the body was just leaning too far forward that it would probably have tilted and the back looked awkward anyway. So what we ended up doing was taking off the fabric and basically just um, arching the upper body a little bit more back, which I didn't show you, but all we did was unscrew the top and lean it back and screw it back in. For the head, I decided to use a pre-lit jack-o'-lantern from Target. This is a plastic one. It lights up really bright, you guys, and I thought it would be easy just to stick one of these on top of it. And it's just so much more easier. You don't have to worry about the lighting, and then the plastic is durable, obviously. So, best solution ever. All I wanted to do was stick a few spiders on the face to kind of look um, like the spiders are taking over the... Um, jack-o-lantern just like the theme of my house which is a spider house and basically just gluing them trying to make it look like they're trying to go up its mouth the only way that this pumpkin is going to hold its place on the body is going to be by using zip ties so what i'm going to do is drill two holes on each side to basically um put the zip tie through one hole and out through the other so that i can zip it onto the shape i mean the body felt like he looked a little too plain which is why I decided to add web just to kind of keep the theme cohesive which is basically the spider theme.